All right, so let's just jump in. <clears throat> okay, so I'm using Blender 2.83 and the default view is layout. What we want to do is texture paint. We're going to get there. So let's start in layout mode though. I want to, the first thing you want to do is select the part of the model that you want to paint. So if you have a bunch of different uh, parts, then you need to make sure that the one that you want to use is selected. So what I want to do right now, all I need to do really is just get rid of this gray rectangle. So I make sure I'm clicked on this particular object. It shows me the uh, material right up here, body center, body center, mat zero. And then when I click into texture paint, if you go to your uh, active tool, you, it should show right here, it's body center, mat, base color, JPEG. So that's the, that's the actual texture that that material is using. So uh, I'm gonna back out here. This is the default workspace. And um, the first thing I want to I need to do here is I need to push in to open up the menu on the side here. Same thing as pushing that. Go to view and change my clipping to something large because this model is um, big. So, uh, so then once I'm in this area, I can zoom in and, um, and I can paint this out. So that's, you know, the, the default color worked great. So perfect. I'm done, right? <laughs> uh, so yeah, so the, the thing to, to make sure though is that you are in fact on the right texture. So if I just, if you don't have something like that, you could change to another color to make sure that, oh, okay, yeah, this is working. And let's talk about this, the user interface here. So you got the texture paint, this is like the normal, the default layout. You have your texture over here and you can also draw on the texture. Uh, you have uh, the, the main window here, you have your tools, over here to the side, you can push T to hide them or to, to, to show them. And then you have your, your, your regular menu over here. The very top button, this, this um, active tool is the, is the main one you need. And you can also do that here. So you could also push the tool on, if you push in, you get the tool here. So depending on how you want to work, you can do it different ways. I like to work in this sort of default mode or I'll do control space on the window that I'm need to work on to make it full screen. So I can do control space in, and then I have my tool, toolbar here. But for now, I'm just gonna leave it here so you can you can see it, you can see everything. Um, all right, so the other thing I'll mention real quick before we really get started is it's good to be able to switch back and forth between rendered and material preview. I'm gonna turn on um, a light real quick just so that we can see the difference. So if, if, if this is the lighting I wanted to use, the way it looks lit and the way it looks shadeless uh, obviously can can change and and might be helpful for you to, to be able to jump, jump back and forth so all the way the way i'm doing it is just pushing z and then going up and then clicking rendered or z down and click material preview all right so um so let's talk about the draw tool first the draw tool is uh um it's drawing and you can change the brush stroke brush size by pushing F and then going down or going up here and changing it up here. Uh, command Z F go back down. The default brush is sort of this soft uh, brush. You can change that and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Uh, but the, yeah, the main thing F to change your size and then to change your color, there's different ways you can do it, but you can click up here and then change it. If you want to sample a color, you can do that here. So you can sample. But sometimes, like this, this time it did, it will sample the wrong color. And I don't 100% know why. Um, it's like a take, take into account like how it's lit or whatever. But right now I'm in material preview. So it actually shouldn't, shouldn't matter. Um, so one tip is if you need to match a color, like in this instance, I need to match this color to, to paint here and the sample color isn't working. So if I, I'm doing that by pushing S as well, by the way, pushing S and, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, so let's say I accidentally had the wrong color. One way you can do for sure is if you sample the color that's on the texture that you need to change, uh, that will, that will always work because this has no lighting, uh, applied to it, I guess. So anyway, uh, that's just a, a tip. So, <clears throat> all right, so let's, uh, go ahead and paint this out and make the stroke bigger and paint this out. Okay. So got that part out of the way. All right. So now let's talk about a few more of the features of the brush that you will need for basically everything. Uh, 
All right, so the, the first thing is, um, uh, let's see, let me go ahead and change my color back to something weird. All right, so if you go up to this tool setting and you, and you scroll down, you'll start getting some of your settings. So uh, I'm not gonna go through everything. I'm just gonna go through some of the main things you need to do. Um, and the, the one thing I'll talk about is the stroke and I'll talk about the fall off. Let's talk about fall off first. So fall off, uh, this will, well, I'll just show you. So if I click constant, the preset constant, it'll be a, it'll have a hard edge to it. It'll have a hard line at the end. Um, and don't worry about the, the jittery parts right now. Don't worry about that right now. So go up to, yeah, you have all these different presets and, and that's great. You can choose whatever you want. You can also do uh, custom and then you have this curve editor and you can do, you know, you can make it, um, sharp. You can make it smooth. You can do some really weird things with it. Let's see if I just, what that does. Yeah. So that, that made the, that did some weird stuff. So you can, you can mess with this editor and you can do some really cool stuff. Uh, for me, I'm just going to use this uh, constant for now and let's just paint some more on here. All right. So, uh, and then you can also affect the fall off as well. Uh, and then, so that's, that's the basics of, of choosing the, the, the softness of your brush. All right. And then the other main one I want to talk about is stroke. So there's a bunch of settings here. And again, you can always hover over anything. If you want to learn more about it, there's like tool tips. It tells you what is dash length and what does it do? Um, and you can change these and mess with these. There's, you know, an interesting one or one that's very useful is line. So if you do this, it'll make a straight line. And if you hold it, if you hold alt, it'll snap to 45 degree increments. So again, very helpful. I'm just going to control Z out of that. Uh, but the other thing, I, the, the main thing I want to talk about, and then, and then I'll get off of here is, um, go back to space here. So if you're, I think the default is space, but, uh, but yeah, if you're in space mode, you can do this stabilized stroke. So if I click stabilize stroke, I'll show you what it does. Uh, okay. Let me come down. So that's with it on, this is with it off. So you can see how it's like a little erratic and that's where some of that jittery comes in just from my mouse movement. Cause I'm not that smooth. Uh, so let me change my breast size a little bit lower. So say I wanted to do something like this line, this line that goes across the aircraft. This is how I could do it. I could use the stabilized stroke and I can affect the radius and the factor. And again, you can hover over for it to tell you what it, what it does. Um, but I could make some really smooth and eh, let me, let me just go back and let me go ahead and sample this color. Yeah, great. All right. And then let me make this a little bit smaller. Let's see, so you can see how you, you can easily do, you know, some, some interesting smooth strokes that run across, you know, and this is what, this is what it looks like on the texture. So, so that's a really, really useful feature. That's uh, yeah, pretty, pretty amazing. Um, all right. So let me control Z, just get out of all this. <laughs> okay. The last thing to mention, uh, which I actually forgot and now I'm coming back to tell you is uh, anytime you do any kind of texture painting or cloning or whatever, if you do any kind of anything in the texture paint tab, um, you need to save the image for it to be, for it to work. So if you make any changes at all, um, one thing you can do, if you look over here on this, on the texture side, you see this image has a star next to it. That means it's not saved. So there's a few different ways you can do it on the tool tab. You can say, save all images. So if I click this, you'll see this goes away. The star goes away from image. The asterisk goes away from the image. Um, I don't actually recommend that way just because you, you don't know how it's saving it. And sometimes I found blender does not save it with the full quality. Um, and if, if, if this was a JPEG, for instance, it would save it as a JPEG. Um, so I like to actually s click on the image and then say, save as, uh, get rid of this image, save as, and then, you know, choose whatever, whatever you want. If you're going to do PNG, um, compression zero, whatever, whatever you're going to do, save it here. Um, and then, you know, you save it in your textures or whatever. If you're going to replace something, um, you can do it here and click. Okay. 
and that's very important. You got to make sure you save the image or else it's not going to, uh, it's not going to actually save the texture. All right. There's a million other things we can talk about, but I think that is good for today's tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. All right. Take care guys.